understand the reach and impact of my voice beyond gospel music. There is such a care to take when you realize you're not just preaching to the choir anymore. You're preaching to the ones who wanted to be in the choir and was too scared to come because they didn't understand our language. Musicians, the God-given ability to unite and to heal and to understand that some of my past words, comments, preaching has been received by the LGBTQ plus community as negative and hurtful. There is nothing more hurtful than to think, to imagine that you said something in the name of God and it hurts somebody. You know, we have a church lingo. We have a church jargon that everybody doesn't get. And sometimes you've got to say it for the people in the back. And for that, I want to apologize to the LGBTQ community. Let's give them a great big round of applause. We want them to have strength and to sincerely know that we must all do the work to embrace all of what God's people and show forth his love to everyone. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I hope that this award and this moment can be the beginning of a bridge building and listening to each other as we follow peace with all men and develop the character of God, which requires seeing God. Thanks. Recently, I ran across a video um, that actually that is making its rounds on social media and um, and it's actually kind of sending out the wrong message uh, to people is for, you know, I guess of the, of the Christian faith community um, or those that are seriously about or serious about, you know, their fellowship with God. Basically, there was a video about Kim Burrell actually kind of somehow softening up her words or apologizing on how she delivers certain words to the uh, to the I call them the alphabet community, the LGBTQI, MSG, whatever you want to call it, community. And basically, her whole point of that is that she's saying that she doesn't necessarily apologize for what she said, but just apologizing for the intensity and how she said it. Now it's funny, she's actually getting ready to apologize or, or, or actually trying to backtrack. That's what I'm gonna call it, backtrack a little bit because she's up for an award. And basically she figures that, you know, that since she's up for an award, that she would go back and actually apologize for pretty much how she delivered the message that she delivered regarding that lifestyle and how detestable, disgusting, and all this other type of stuff, you know, that she had mentioned years before. I know I did a video actually regarding that particular uh, sermon, I guess you could call it, that she actually spoke on. And I, if I can find the video uh, in my uh, archive, I'll kind of post it right here so you all can see it. But in that video, um, basically she has a lot of things to actually say. Um, and the thing about it again is that even when I went to listen to it, you know, there was just, you know, I can say that it was, it was, her words were very intense. And basically at the time that there was not, there was no apology to be expected. But as time have changed now, you know, and this, that, and the other, you know, and basically, you know, she wants to, I guess, accept this award. She felt that, you know, she actually had to apologize for the, her intensity as far as what she said. You know, we're living in a culture now where we're being asked to conform. And I hate that word because basically, you know, the Bible in the New Testament already speaks of it. I think it speaks of it in Romans or something like that, but I don't know the exact book in the Bible in the New Testament. But I know it's in the New Testament where it actually talks about a great falling away of the faith, you know, and pretty much, you know, people are actually wanting to, for the most part, ditch Christ and actually go along with the customs and the, you know, and the behaviors of the world in order to remain popular in the eyes of man. And basically, I believe, in my opinion, that we're actually running into one of those things. One of the main goals, or actually one of the main things that the, that the Lord God actually want us to be, and it's like almost, if in a sense, if you think about it, it's almost like it's a plea. It's that he want us to, the, for those that truly love him, he want us to, to continue to be the people that we're supposed to be in him and out in the world. Meaning that you are still required to give them the word, nothing but the word, and make no apologies for it. But in this day and time, we have a lot of people now that figure that, okay, you know what? It Maybe if I soften my words a little bit, 
maybe if I kind of, you know, back away and maybe kind of give it, you know, a little leeway and, and maybe pat him on the back a little bit, everything will be okay. You know, I won't be hated as much. You know, I'll be liked by people. You know, I'll begin to, you know, get recommended for awards and such. One of the things that, and, and the funny thing about it is that if you think about it, that's really what's going on. In this day and time, we're having the world run the Christian folks into the closet. It is what it is. Like I and, and the thing about it again is that I know that a lot of people may not like this message, but I really don't care because again, I'm going to say what I have to say. It does not matter. And the issue is that, you know, those who are actually real, still wanting to do the right thing and still stand up against this foolishness, they're the main ones that are facing persecutions. You know, their jobs are, you know, being yanked from them. It's like they're being casted out to be like the worst thing walking. But even out of all of that, the Lord God promised that he was going to still take care of his own. And see, that's that promise that assures me that it doesn't matter what the world thinks of me. Because he said that if you pretty much love me, you'll keep my commandments. So that basically lets me know that as far as one of his commands, that means one of his commands to us is that we still continue to be instant in season as well as out of season. We still have to carry the word regardless of how the attitudes and the customs of the world change. The Lord God is not going to change. So that means that by that being said, we are not supposed to change either. The same word and the same intensity that was given as far as the condemnation of sin, the word of God is not going to let up and it still is required to, to, you know, and we're still required to give that word with that same intensity. Now, I understand a lot of people will actually say, okay, well, you know, sometimes you can't be rough with people. You have to sometimes enter, you know, and talk to them, you know, and, and, and it's all about how you approach. And I, and you know what? You have a point. Approach is important. Because sometimes, you know, as the saying goes, you can draw more with honey than you do can by with lemons or something like that. So, yes, you do have a point. But see, at some point in time, because of mercy, people think that, OK, you know, that they can continue to normally do wrong. But yet still, when it's time, when it comes time for correction, you have to be soft and gentle with them. And see, that's the part where, you know, you can say that you're trying to really how can I say, take things for granted and run things in the ground. Uh, and like I say, this may have been years ago or whatever the case may be. And basically, you know, we was talking about the word of God and everything and basically, you know, and, and, and such. And basically they were kind of like new to learning who God is, you know, new to the fellowship, new to, you know, being saved. They, they were very inquisitive about what it is and this, that, and the other. What is it all about? What do you have to do and this, that, and the other? And of course, you always want to jump at opportunities to teach others about what you have learned, you know, and what you're experiencing and how important it is to still maintain your identity in this ever-changing world when it comes to the word of God. And basically, you know, he was like, okay, well, I want to do the right thing, you know, but I'm scared of basically, you know, how the church is going to, you know, receive me. And see, one of the main things that I've learned, too, you know, is that when you're talking to people, you end up learning a lot from them just as much as they are learning from you. And think and, and what their main concern was is that with the black church and see, here we go again, everything and all these issues and things that we hear about the church, you know, the problems and such, it always comes and stems from the black church. So, you know, we was having one of those conversations, but. They were saying basically, you know, that the black church, you know, is so high and mighty, you know, it's the fact is that, you know, I, you people are afraid to go because the moment that you get in there, you're always being judged. And, you know, I think and the thing about it again is that, you know, I'm sitting up there listening to them. And the thing about it is that they, they brought up some valid points. I'm not going to lie, you know, and, and what I gathered from that conversation that I actually had with him is the fact that, you know, we are, meaning the black church, we are a fierce entity. And, and 
from my opinion, I would have to say rightfully so, because again, you know, the Lord said, you know, if he doesn't soon return, you know, no one is going to be safe. He won't find nobody righteous. No one, you know, worthy of, 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 of returning to heaven with him. You know what I mean? But he was saying that the reason why, you know, he don't go to, you know, don't want to, you know, go to church is because of he feels that, you know, that he's going to be judged and the backlash and all this other type of stuff. When I told him, I say, well, one thing that you have to understand is that when we're talking about church, you know, you always have to include religion because, again, they're both pretty much one and the same. You know, we are taught the black church, you know, is. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, my church is Pentecostal. I'm a, I, I'm, a, I'm from a small church. But even in that small church, we, we still have problems. I have yet to see a perfect church. Okay, so like I say, you know, miss me with that. I, I don't, I, I don't. It is what it is. But overall, the church is supposed to be the hospital, if you will, a place of refuge for the world. So meaning that when a person is sick, worldly, they should be at free will to, or at liberty to come into any church and receive God, ask God for forgiveness, repentance, you know, all of these type of elements that, that is important in today's time. So with that being said, I had to explain that, you know, my job and, and, and the thing about it is that I had to kind of take it away from the, the broad theory as far as the black church and I had to bring it to a personal matter. I'm like, well, you got to understand, I'm not speaking on the representation of all black churches because, again, I don't know how every black church is being ran. But I told him, I say, you have to understand something. You know, God says that the church is supposed to be holy. And that, you know, we're supposed to keep it holy. And the problems that we're running into to, with today's church is that there's too much of the world that is coming into the church. And really, and they're changing the very dynamics of what it means to be a church. But you still have those churches, a couple, only a few and far between. You still have that few, those few churches that still believe in running the church the way that it's supposed to be ran. Meaning that, okay, when you come to church... You're coming, again, looking for the Lord to do something for you. You're coming to be saved. You're coming for some answers. And the thing about it, again, is that, you know, my job, and again, I had to take it from the broad and bring it to the, to the local. My job, and I told him, my job is not to judge you. That's not my job. My job is only to love you enough to give you the word of God. Now, the word of God is the one, is the entity that is going to judge you, not me. So what that means is that I cannot sugarcoat, I cannot pacify, I cannot be concerned with how you feel. We have to get out of our feelings because a lot of times we get into our feelings that which means that you know we allow things to go through and we allow you know things to kind of get out of whack because of again feelings. But the Lord said that we had to get out of our feelings because he's not concerned with our, how we feel about something. But I told him I say look, these are the things you got to understand is that when you're talking about church, you, you, it's serious business. You got to come for one thing and one thing only, and that's to focus on God. The Lord God is the one that does all the judging. All we are is his mouthpiece. All I can do is give you the word. I love you enough to give you the word of God. And basically, I have to give you the word of God with the intensity that it's supposed to be given. Now, again, if you're a babe in Christ, of course, you know, you have to enter, you know, and your approach is very important because you don't want to scare people away. You don't want to make them think that, oh, you know, that you have to be perfect and all this other type of stuff. No, but you have to let them know that, OK, you're entering into a new, a new being, a new, a, a new way of living. And there are adjustments that have to be made. And if we, you know, break a goal or I should say go against that, then, you know, we do what we call repent. A lot of people these days want to say that they're church hurt, this, that, and the other, but the issue is that they realize that they're not being hurt. They just don't want to be called out in the mess that they're in. And the issue is that they will blame anything and anyone except for themselves and the fact that they have that pride that they don't want to let go of. So when you run across people that say, oh, I don't want to go to church or this, that, and the other, and I try to stay out of church or stay away from church folks because they like to judge people and that they've been church hurt, stop lying because you are a liar. And the truth is not in you. I can tell you that right now. 
The fact is, is that you enjoy the sin that you're doing and you don't want to come out of it. One thing about it that when we begin to be honest about how we feel about certain things and the reason why we won't go to church or whatever the case, the Lord God can deal with us a whole lot better than us actually tiptoeing around and playing games. And see, this is what we got going on now. People are playing games, but they don't understand they're playing games with their soul. That's real talk. They're playing games with their soul because of the fact that they are, you know, thinking that the world has something better to offer than what God has. So you got a lot of them, again, that are falling away. You have a lot of them now that once stood firmly on the word of God, but they are slowly taking their feet off the word and, again, dabbling into other things because, again, they want to be liked by society. They want society to recognize them and put them on these high pedestals. That's what's important to them now. It doesn't matter what the word of God say. The word of God say no sin shall enter right there in or this, that, and the other. But yet still, these people of today are saying, you know what? We're being too hard on them. You know, let us ease up. Let us soften it up. Let us soften the image. So basically, God is asking us, okay, so I don't change. So why are you giving the impression to the people that I do change? If I say that I'm not going to allow this, that, and the other, I mean that. So who are you to try to change what I said in my word to accommodate your agenda so you can get a pat on the back from man? That's what we're dealing with. That's, if you think about it, that's exactly what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a crisis now. We're dealing with an issue where you have a lot of people that now feel that it's okay to give half-truths. It's okay to hold the word of God back. It's okay to only give part of the word. It's okay to pet people in their sin and say, you know what, it's okay. God understands, you know, this, that, and the other. And see, and that's that very lie that's going to cause a lot of people to bust hell wide open. There's no other way that I can put it. So when I actually ran across that video of Kim Burrell and her grand speech about, you know, how she wants everyone to come together and this, that, and the other. I mean, it's okay, I guess, for what it was as far as the underlying meaning, as far as the unity, but you got to understand something. God never told his people to unify with sin. He never told us that. Man is telling us that if you want to be accepted, you're going to have to, again, give them a watered down version of the word of God. If you want to be accepted, if you want your award, if you want to keep your job, if you want to this, that, and the other, if you want to move up, you got to do it the way. No. And the issue is that people are afraid to go against the grain. Why? Because, again, their faith in God is not where they want. It's not where it's supposed to be. And they're afraid to admit it. You could tell me anything, but the thing about it, action speaks louder than words. It always does and always will. The people's faith in God is dwindling. That's the reason why you have a lot of them that are falling away from the faith. You really have to look at this and actually see it for what it is. People's faith is not as strong as it used to be. Instead of depending on God for their pure and only source, they're depending on man. Their security blanket is wrapped up in stocks and bonds and all of this other type of stuff. When the Lord God told us in his word not to cleave to any of these things, because what? Those things will decay and rot away. So basically, again, you know, it's so many ways that you can actually look at this thing. It's, it's, this is some serious stuff. It's a whole, it's, it's so many ways that you can look at this, you know, and the thing about it again is that it's scary. It's very scary because again, it's letting us know, it's telling, it's, it's, it's letting us know where mankind is headed. God tells us to still be true, still stay on the wall despite being persecuted by man. Because again, he said that a lot of people are going to face persecution because of his word. But he says still, even in the uncertainties, he still told us to remain true. He still told us to remain faithful. He still told us to give the word uncut. 
So when we give the word or a watered down version of it, then God said, you know what? You still didn't do what I told you to do. You did it the way you wanted to do as far as what was easiest for you. And because of that, this person is going to go and die in their sins. And guess what? I'm going to hold you accountable now because you didn't give them the word like I told you to. It's a very serious walk. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I, I, there's things that I do every day, knowingly or unknowingly, or however you want to look at it, that is not pleasing in God's sight. And I ask God to forgive me. Because again, you know, we're going to continue to make mistakes along this road of trying to get right. And even when his son come back from the second time, we're still going to be in the process of trying to get it right. Why? Because again, we're still in the flesh. The flesh is subject to error. Every day we're warring against the flesh, the spirit against the flesh. Who's going to win? You know, this, that, and the other. But again, you know, that video, it really kind of made me like kind of step back a bit. I'm like, wow, it's amazing that people now are purposely really turning their backs from the word of God and being so concerned about what society thinks of them. So that let you know right there that their heart was never in the right place to begin with. It was never where it was supposed to be. You got a lot of people in a lot of churches now that are like I, I like to call them people counters. You know, basically, you know, the more people that are in the tenants there, the more, the more money that the, that the people will give this, that and the other. And basically what me, what that means is that they have to be careful about what they speak in the pulpit, because if they tell them something or preach the word, on something that the people are caught up in, they have to sit there and wonder and think, oh my God, is this person gonna come back again for any more of my services or this, that, and the other? This is what we're talking about. But God said where two or three are gathered in his name, he's gonna be there as well. So it don't matter who goes away and walks away, God says, I'm gonna still be there. Why? Because you were faithful to me. And guess what? I got to deliver on my promise. I got to be faithful to you. That's what it's all about. But I figured I just want to kind of get that off my chest a little bit. Again, you know, this it wasn't a video that I actually planned to do. But when I ran across that video of Kimberrell, that really, really kind of hit home on me on so many levels to kind of get me to thinking about a whole lot of stuff about the end times and the Laodicean people, you know, that are mentioned in the book of Revelations. But, you know, it really makes you think about where mankind is going and what they really think of their faith. They think more of man than they do of God. But anyway, I'll be back with more videos soon. You all stay blessed. Have a great day.